Have you ever wondered what happens if you just blow these up without any mold? We have two priorities today. They want a conduit from their fiber box. I'm gonna start driving these ground rods and running our ground ring. To be renting a lift and going up on the roof of the gas station to <laughs> shoot some lights. So hope you'll stay tuned for that episode. And if you get a chance, check out my Patreon. Okay, so we're building a cell site on top of the roof. Rather, we're running electrical to it. The cell guys are building it. We have a trench dug around the whole thing here, including where a pad-mounted generator is going to go. We're going to be running what's called a ground ring. It's going to be tinned number two bare copper wire going all the way around with ground rods at each corner and with whips of wire sticking up out of the ground that are going to tap onto the fence posts. So we have two priorities today. One, they want a conduit from their fiber box over to the electrical room. That's actually the main priority and probably what I'm going to put you on. We also have our grounding ring that's going to go around this platform, around the gen pad. They want six ground rods throughout this thing and they also want whips of number two bare copper wire coming up in very specific areas. First for ground rod, we got one right there. Basically on these two corners, on these two corners, and on these two corners. Then we want a whip to come up for every fence post, which I'm going to look into, for each corner of this platform. So we'll just say one right here, one right there, one right here, and one right here. What we also want is at least two just for our equipment. Now we don't have a trench coming to our equipment anymore, but we'll put one additional one right here and one additional one right here that can be dug in if needed. Now I need to ask about the fence pole specs. But basically we're gonna hit this wall, we're gonna LB onto this wall. We're gonna stay above this door. <laughs> we're gonna come into here and we have two holes that have been cored into the wall to get into the electrical room. So we'll probably take our top one and then the condo is just gonna run just to right here on the wall and then it's gonna end. And this is their oh, this is their fiber area. That looks like a giant Splice? Fiber um, cable, if I were to guess, but I don't know for sure. Well, just end. Let's move on. Out of that hole, offset up, which is going to be annoying. And then now that I'm thinking about it, because it's a fiber run, we might actually need to use a 12-12-4 JB on this that wall. So if we did do an LB or a JB or whatever, then we just go that way. That's kind of what I want to start you off on. Okay, so we're in the process of heating a piece from there. There. All right, I got Telus working on the rest of that conduit run. We're just hearing from the mobile guys, project manager. They might make us redo the whole conduit run in a different direction. So I'm gonna try to prevent that from happening. Uh, while he's working on that, I'm going to start driving these ground rods and running our ground ring. Alright, so we got our new plan. Sweep up onto this strut. I would have done it the other way, but uh, had the strut maybe on this side. But whatever, try it. If the sweep works, the thing is, do you think a 90 degree sweep is gonna fit there like that? Versus maybe take that one and just put it up on this. And then maybe, again, as long as the sweep doesn't hit there. Up, strut across here, where they're gonna be running their cables as well. And we're gonna come over here, and this is where things get really wet and wild we're gonna probably put an lb here 
because at that point we'll be at three and a half bends or nearing 360 degrees. Probably stick an LB right here, have it come down. 90 degree bend onto some dura blocks, which strut strapped onto that dura block. And then probably another LB right here, either at an angle or with enough room to do another 90 bend like that. And then to connect to our conduit. Yeah. Let's get to this uh, grounding ring. I have all six of my ground rods driven. Put a number two bare copper wire in here, have it circle all around, and then we're gonna use some explosive thermite welding to tap on pieces in various areas that are gonna stub out of the ground. We got our ground ring in. Before we do our whips, we're going to weld to all the ground rods first, and that requires a specific mold. This is for all of our four aught sizes. The igniting cable, the igniter, the run and tap, which get used up fast. So we have a few of these. They take a 45. 45 charge. Number two solid to 5.8 ground rod. Ooh, this is a brand new mold. We've never used this before. One thing that's important is it doesn't have to be two pieces of wire. We can just clamp it over the same one, clamp it over like that, and then just set it on top of the ground rod. So here's our ground wire. You will clamp onto there, clamp it on like that, and then it'll just sit right on top. Push it down. I can hear the noise to, that signals to me that it's pushed all the way down. Now we'll add our charge. Oh, this one must require 90s? 90 plus. Plug the igniter onto the tab. Fire in the hole. I just realized I didn't, I didn't touch it up with a map gas or anything. All right, look at that. Thanks. Tell us it has a screwdriver. Tell us it's prepared. See that molten thing? You want to not touch that for a I while. Weld my screwdriver. We're going to leave that over here to cool down for just a couple minutes. And here's our weld. We can even knock the slag off if we want to. Although, look at it. It, did, it was so clean. Barely any slag. So that is a welded bond there. And we're going to be doing that all over this grounding ring. If you want to see CAD welding in more detail and with bigger wire, check out my last video. In the meantime, I'm just going to get to work here. Now we're going to use this bunch. This is our run and tap. Essentially what it means is you can slide two in on that side. In other words, you just make the wire come in like that, and then it welds the two together. have 16 or something whips laid out at every fence post platform corner gate post two whips for the grounding electrode conductor a couple whips for the generator generator fence posts tell us still working on his conduit run here that was weird Ooh, that was a nice one. Yeah, thank you.
I know, I've seen everybody looking over the railing and like shaking their head. Water? Oh, thanks, but I'm good. Oh, if you had a Gatorade or something, I'd take one of those. Do you want to stick uh, this mock piece in so that it goes into the building? Let's just mock it up so we can get a piece, and then it's like, shoot, let's just finish this run. 40 inches long. And I imagine that's flexible because you can push it in and push out. It in and out. Got the corners of the fence posts. Got that one. Have you ever wondered what happens if you just blow these up without any mold? I'm genuinely curious, so. What's wasting one for science, you know? Uh, I got some. Mm. That's good for the little end of the episode. But each one of those, I believe is good for 50 uses before it needs to be replaced so that's why we have quite a few of them because even today i probably did i don't know 20 30 charges and after a while it just keeps eating away at the graphite until finally it just starts spilling out every time thanks for watching if you're one of the diehards who watch all the way through my video please like it subscribe and comment on the video by commenting on the video it gets my videos out to more and more people videos with a lot of comments get more views and that helps me with my channel not many people really know how complex gas station wiring is and if you've been following my videos for a while you know if you've been focusing on gas stations for the time being have you ever looked at a gas station canopy and thought i wonder what's up there today we're actually going to be going on top of a canopy to troubleshoot some lights that aren't working